On the 9th of August, 1999, the then Russian President Boris Yeltsin appointed a new acting prime minister. His name, Vladimir Putin. Most Russians didn't have an idea of who he was. On the 31st of December, 1999, Yeltsin unexpectedly resigned, and Putin became the acting president. Three months later, in March 2000, he was elected president, and since he took power, he has not let go. Under his leadership, he has expanded Russia's influence in the Middle East, strengthened the Russian relationship with China, and successfully invaded two of Russia's neighbors. Actually, in March 2023, the ICC issued a warrant for Putin's arrest due to war crimes in Ukraine. But who is this man, Vladimir Putin? Stick around as we uncover the story of this controversial leader. Vladimir Putin was born on the 7th of October, 1952, in Leningrad, now St. Petersburg, Russia. He was the youngest of three children, but he never met his two brothers, Albert and Victor, who were born in the 1930s. Albert died as an infant, and Victor died of diphtheria and starvation. In 1942, during the siege of Leningrad by Nazi Germany's forces in World War II, Putin's mother was a factory worker, and his father was a conscript in the Soviet Navy. At the age of 12, he began to practice sambo and judo. It seems he wanted to be the Russian Bruce Lee. Putin studied law at the Leningrad State University, now St. Petersburg State University, from 1970 to 1975. At university, Putin met this man, Anatoly Sobchak, who would later become the first democratically elected mayor of St. Petersburg and played a big role in Vladimir Putin's political career, as you will find out later. After graduating from university in 1975, Putin joined the Committee of State Security, famously known as the KGB, where he served for 16 years, rising to the rank of KGB Lieutenant Colonel before the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. His decade and a half career as a KGB agent was controversial as you expect. Nobody knows what is real or what is propaganda. From 1985 to 1990, he was officially stationed in Dresden, East Germany, using a cover identity as a translator. According to the official Kremlin presidential site, the East German communist regime commended Putin with a bronze medal for faithful service to the National People's Army. During this period, his mission was to travel undercover to Western Germany and also steal Western technologies. It is also rumored that he may have participated in supplying weapons to the Red Army faction, which was considered a terrorist organization by the West German government. While in East Germany, he also witnessed the fall of the Berlin Wall. As you can see, the KGB molded him into the leader he is today. In early 1990, he returned to Leningrad, where he worked with the International Affairs Section of Leningrad State University while working on his doctoral dissertation. There, he looked for new KGB recruits, watched the student body, and renewed his friendship with his former professor, Anatoly Sobchak, soon to be the mayor of Leningrad. In May 1990, Anatoly Sobchak was elected mayor of Leningrad, and he appointed Putin as his advisor. Putin held several government positions in Sobchak's government. In 1994, he was appointed the deputy mayor of St. Petersburg. While serving in St. Petersburg, he was accused of corruption. Despite the investigator's recommendation that Putin be fired, he was never fired. In June 1996, Sobchak lost his bid for re-election in St. Petersburg, and Putin, who had led his election campaign, resigned from his positions in the city administration. Putin then moved to Moscow. There, for reasons that have never really been explained, he suddenly moved really fast in his career. He was appointed as deputy chief of the Presidential Property Management Department. Shortly after, on 26th of March, 1997, President Boris Yeltsin appointed Putin deputy chief of presidential staff and chief of the Presidential Property Management Department. Obviously, he was super busy. However, he found time to earn the equivalent of a PhD in Russia in economics. His dissertation was about strategic planning of the reproduction of the mineral resource. Putin's thesis was actually plagiarized. Fellows at the Brookings Institution found that 15 pages were copied from an American textbook. Later on 25th of May, 1998, 
Yeltsin appointed Putin Director of the Federal Security Service, FSB, the intelligence agency that replaced the KGB. Seems like Putin had really gained Yeltsin's trust. On 9th of August 1999, Putin was appointed one of the three deputy prime ministers, and later on that day, was appointed acting prime minister of the Russian Federation by President Yeltsin. Yeltsin also announced that he wanted to see Putin as his successor. Later on that same day, Putin agreed to run for the presidency. Was Putin so good at his job? Was he a good timekeeper? Or was there something extraordinary about him? In just three years, he had achieved so much. Yeltsin picking Putin as his successor was not the problem. Russia at the time was a democracy. Therefore, they needed to actually win an election for Putin to become the president. And there was a big problem. Putin was very unpopular to the Russian people, and President Yeltsin was also growing very unpopular. Therefore, Putin's chances of winning the coming elections were very slim. In September 1999, a series of bombings killed several people in several Russian cities, including Moscow. Putin, who was the new prime minister, blamed the Chechnya separatist movement for the attacks. He regularly appeared on Russian television, claiming he would avenge Russia. Putin's calm image and unrelenting approach to sorting out the issue soon raised his popularity and allowed him to overtake his rivals. On 31st of December 1999, Yeltsin unexpectedly resigned and, according to the Constitution of Russia, Putin became the acting president of the Russian Federation. The first presidential decree that Putin signed on 31st of December 1999 was titled on guarantees for the former president of the Russian Federation and the members of his family. This decree ensured that corruption charges against the outgoing president and his relatives would not be pursued. Another criminal investigation in which Putin himself, as a member of the St. Petersburg city government, was one of the suspects was also dropped. Due to the unexpected resignation of Yeltsin, elections were held in March 2000 instead of June Putin won in the first round with 53% of the vote and became the new Russian president. When Putin got into office, the Russian economy was in a very bad state. This had been caused by the fall of the Soviet Union. Upon the fall of the Soviet Union in 1990, the government had to sell state assets and the Russian economy was in a freefall. All of these companies ended up in the hands of a few rich individuals, known as the Russian oligarchs. The economy was totally decentralized and the state had lost central authority, while the oligarchs robbed the country and controlled its powerful institutions. Oligarchs became increasingly influential in Russian politics during Boris Yeltsin's presidency. When Putin took over, he restored the hierarchy of power, ending the omnipotence of regional elites, as well as destroying the political influence of the oligarchs in the Russian government. Putin apparently won a power struggle with the oligarchs. They were allowed to maintain most of their wealth in exchange for their explicit support and alignment with his government. Those that didn't support him were eliminated. A second wave of oligarchs emerged in the 2000s, who were friends and former colleagues of President Putin. His first term was marked by efforts to stabilize the Russian economy, which had been in turmoil following the collapse of the Soviet Union. Putin implemented various economic reforms aimed at improving Russia's economy. These reforms included changes to tax policies, labor laws, and efforts to combat corruption. Putin enjoyed widespread popularity during his first term, with many Russians viewing him as a strong leader, capable of restoring stability and national pride. On 14th of March, 2004, Putin won the presidency for a second term with a landslide, receiving 71% of the vote. During this period, Russians saw a continuation of Putin's policies to strengthen the Russian state and economy. Putin was also criticized by the West for failing to protect the country's new independent media. This was after Anna Politkovskaya, a journalist who exposed corruption in the Russian army and its conduct in Chechnya, was shot in the lobby of her apartment building in 2006. Internationally, Putin pursued a more assertive foreign policy, challenging Western dominance and seeking to establish Russia as a global power. In 2008, Putin was barred from a third term by the Constitution. The Russian Constitution dictated that one can only serve for two consecutive terms, 
but does not give a limit on the total number of terms one can serve. First Deputy Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev was elected as his successor. On the 8th of May 2008, only a day after handing the presidency to Medvedev, Putin was appointed Prime Minister of Russia, maintaining his political dominance. In this period, Russia invaded Georgia. On the 24th of September 2011, while speaking at the United Russia Party Congress, Medvedev announced that he would recommend the party to nominate Putin as its presidential candidate. This switch was termed by many in the media as Rokirovka, the Russian term for the chess move, castling. On the 4th of March, 2012, Putin won the 2012 Russian presidential election in the first round, with 63.6% .6 of the votes. The vote was criticized by the Russian opposition and by international observers for procedural irregularities. His re-election was met with widespread protests amid allegations of electoral fraud. Putin started his third term amidst chaos. Putin's presidency was finally inaugurated in the Kremlin on 7th of May 2012. Putin's third term was characterized by increased authoritarianism and a crackdown on dissent. The government passed restrictive laws targeting LGBTQ, the media, and political opposition, leading to concerns about shrinking political freedoms and human rights abuses. Internationally, Putin pursued an assertive foreign policy, including the annexation of Crimea in 2014, following the fall of Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych. After the annexation of Crimea, pro-Russian separatists in eastern Ukraine began a conflict against the Ukrainian government, with alleged support from the Russian government. While Russia denied direct involvement, evidence suggests otherwise. Putin also became directly involved in the Syrian civil war in September 2015, providing military support to the government of Bashar al-Assad. This move led to condemnation from the international community and sanctions from Western countries. During this period, Putin was also accused of cybercrimes. This was after Russia allegedly interfered with the 2016 United States presidential election. Putin later denied those claims. Economically, Russia faced challenges during Putin's third term, including falling oil prices and Western sanctions. In 2018, Putin won the Russian presidential election with more than 76% of the vote. His fourth term began on 7th of May 2018 and is expected to end this year. Putin invited Dmitry Medvedev to form the new government together. On the 25th of May 2018, Putin announced that he would not run for president in 2024. On 14th of June 2018, Putin opened the 21st FIFA World Cup which took place in Russia for the first time. On the 3rd of July, 2020, Putin seemed to have abandoned his promise of not running for office for another term. He signed an executive order to officially insert amendments into the Russian constitution, allowing him to run for two additional six-year terms. These amendments took effect on the 4th of July, 2020. It seems he is not ready to let go of the power he enjoys. On the 22nd of December 2020, Putin also signed a bill giving lifetime prosecutorial immunity to Russian ex-presidents. On the 24th of February 2022, Putin in a televised address announced a special military operation in Ukraine, launching a full-scale invasion of the country. Russia's invasion was met with international condemnation. International sanctions were widely imposed against Russia, including against Putin personally. On the 17th of March, 2023, the International Criminal Court issued a warrant for Putin's arrest, alleging that Putin held criminal responsibility for the illegal deportation and transfer of children from Ukraine to Russia during the Russian invasion of Ukraine. On the 23rd of June, 2023, the Wagner Group, a Russian state-funded private military company controlled by Yevgeny Prigozhin, who is a former close ally of Russia's President Vladimir Putin, rebelled against the government of Russia. The revolt arose amidst escalating tensions between the Russian Ministry of Defense and Yevgeny Prigozhin, the leader of the Wagner Group. Prigozhin portrayed the rebellion as a response to an alleged attack on his forces by the ministry. Prigozhin's forces seized control of Rostov-on-Don and the Southern Military District headquarters and advanced towards Moscow in an armored column. 
Following negotiations with Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko, Prigozhin agreed to stand down. On the 23rd of August 2023, exactly two months after the rebellion, Prigozhin was killed along with nine other people when a business jet crashed in Tver Oblast, north of Moscow. Western intelligence reported that the crash was likely caused by an explosion on board, and it is widely suspected that the Russian state was involved. Vladimir Putin has declared that he will be running for president in this year's election. Do you think he will win? Leave a comment below on your thoughts. That was a brief history of Russian President Vladimir Putin. If you enjoyed the video, do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more educational videos.